Hey guys, what's going on? It's Bear Beats here. Now this video, I was going to chuck at you an idea that I had about bridging the stereo amplifiers that aren't actually bridgeable in the first place. Okay, your first thoughts would be like, you can't do that, you can't bridge a stereo amplifier that's not got a little bridge switch. But trust me, you can. And in this video, I'll just prove to you how you do it. So I'm going to be using this as a sound source 5.1 receiver with a mono subwoofer output. Now all subwoofer outputs will be mono, so bear that in mind. And for the amplification, I'll be using this Technics that I've got, and it's stereo. It's a good, solid, simple amplifier, so it's good to use. Uh, it's got a single volume knob, and on the back, there's eight sets of terminals. You'll only be using the top four, okay? I'm only going to be using the top four, just disregard the bottom four, all right? Now you'll also need what's called an RCA splitter, which is what this is. It splits one RCA signal into two. Simple as that. Now here you have two identical sine waves. As you can see they're both in phase. As one goes up the other one goes up. As one goes down the other one goes down. Now as it would be one is left, one is right. Top is left, bottom is right. Okay so one's coming out left speaker, one's coming out right speaker. Now you'll note I've got the balance on normal. Amplifier is all set up. Now I'm leaving these levels exactly as they are. I'm not touching the knobs, the volume or the bass. And I've got my multimeter plugged in to one of the channels. So this is the left hand side channel, got the multimeter plugged in and I'm reading AC voltage, okay? So I'm reading how much voltage is gonna be coming out the amplifier. So I'm gonna hit play on this. And as you can see, the waves are moving. And from the voltmeter, I'm gonna set it at two volts, all right? So not much power at all, two volts. Now look what happens if I plug the terminals of the voltmeter into the two positives. I'm reading zero. Now I'm gonna hit play and watch what happens. So the signal's been sent to the Technics, and when you connect the two terminals to both positives, you get zero volts, because both of them are cancelling each other out, because they're in phase. So when you connect them both to the positives, they're trying to push each other back the way that they're trying to go. I don't know how to explain this to you, but whilst one pushes one way, the other pushes in the same direction. So you get zero voltage, because there's not like a complete circuit. If you were to do this with a speaker hooked up, you'll surely pop the amplifier, so I don't recommend trying this. Now this second one, if I flip it over, right, so I flip it upside down. So instead of both positive terminals pushing the same way, one's gonna push and one's gonna pull. Okay, now watch what happens. So I'm gonna select this one, go up to uh, edit uh, effect, go down and click invert. And when it inverts, you'll see the difference immediately on the screen, okay? There you go. So as one goes up, the other one goes down. As one pushes, one pulls. Now that, that is the two positive terminals, that's what they're doing. So let's hit play and see what happens to the voltage on the voltmeter. Look at that, 4.3, 4.4. So I've doubled the voltage without touching the knobs on the amplifier. This is bridging the amplifier. One positive is pushing, the other is pulling. If I control Z it and undo the changes, hit play, look, I get zero on the voltmeter because they're both in phase and cancel each other out. If I redo the changes, put them back as out of phase, meaning one's pushing, one's pulling, I get double the voltage, 4.3 volts. So that is exactly how you're bridging the amplifier up to work as double the power working together inside. This speaker is set to one channel, unbridged, just simple one channel, it's working at 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts. If I now bridge it, connecting the terminals to both positives and inverting the signal on one of the channels, look, I'm getting double the power, over double the power, I'm getting one volt and the speaker's moving a lot more. I haven't changed any of the no volume knobs, I haven't changed any gains, this is just because the two amplifiers are working together in unison to create over double the power originally. Now the real life components make this work not on the computer, so to make this work actually with a component, it's called an inverting amplifier. And the circuit diagram looks a little bit like this. Now this can get confusing, so listen carefully. The top line, the input, is the positive from the signal. So when you plug in your RCA, that's the tip of the RCA plug. You've got a resistor in series and a resistor in parallel, and this bottom one, zero volt, is the negative. The signal goes through the first resistor, through the operational amplifier, through the negative, which reverses it, and then the parallel resistor keeps it in phase, and it comes out the other side reversed. The zero volt is just the ground. So what this component does is it inverts the signal from the preamp before it gets to the amplifier, but you only do this on one of the channels. So what ends up happening is one channel is inverted and the other one is kept normal, just like you saw on Audacity. I flip one of them over so that they're out of phase. The most simple example of this is a TL071, which is what I've bought a couple of. As you can see there inside the microchip, it's basically what like what I've just showed you. Uh, if I click on this, 
and I can show you a bit more detail. I'll be connecting this to the positive, to the tip. Uh, I'll be using pins two, three, and six, which is all I'll be using. Um, connect the uh, positive signal to the negative so it gets inverted and comes out number six. Uh, now, I'm not try sure what I was trying to show here with my fingers when I was recording this video. Oh, that's a resistor that will go around and be connected in parallel to that. Um, and that's what it looks like. It's quite a small little component, so I'm going to have to be fiddly with the soldering iron. These are the resistors I'll need to get. 10k resistors that are the same impedance as the audio signal coming from the preamp. They're pretty small as well. I'll be dealing with millivolts, so they don't need to be able to take a lot of voltage or a lot of amps because it's tiny, tiny little volts coming from the signal. So there you go. Really, really cheap off eBay as per usual. I love a bit of eBay. Now, what I've done here is I've got some disused RCA wires that I had lying around and I've cut them in half so I've got the wires exposed. Now, this one is the tip. These bits, these insulated ones inside, they're the tip of the RCA plug. All right, there you go. That's the tip. And that, these two, is what I'm going to be connecting my operational amplifier to, my little inverter, okay? So I'll be connecting the tip of it to that one, yeah? Be connecting that one to the uh, plus and the, the zero I'll be connecting to this one, okay, which is the outside round of the wire. So that'll be my negative. I hope this video made some sense to you guys. It's quite complicated stuff and it's only part one. I'll be making a video when I get the components through the post. I'll video me wiring them up, soldering them together and showing you the techniques properly bridged playing some music and it should make some more sense to you guys. So stay tuned. Thank you.